Hey everybody, you're listening to the Night's Tale Podcast, and I'm your host, Robert E. Woods, and today we have a special guest in the building. We have Brandon Russ, a former U.S. Marine Corps, uh, well, a U.S. Marine Corps veteran who is currently in the hospitality field. Uh, Brandon, could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, uh, my name is Brandon. I'm 29. I was in the Marine Corps for about six years and doing uh, field artillery um, came there and uh, went to many places around the world, came back uh, stateside and started like, you know, getting interested in um, more of chef stuff and hospitality. So after the Marine Corps, I went to culinary school in Charlotte, North Carolina. And at the same time, I was playing music there. Um, just local gigs and then eventually I got in as it came close to graduation I'm just like man I just if I really want to go do something I have to go like take the leap and there's always that, you know the element of risk so I ended up in New York and I'm trying to do hospitality things specifically chef things and music things and combine the two so it's been a road so far <laughs> right so um, what do you think the ideal vision would be like when you merge hospitality and your experience as a chef, like how do you, in music, how do you think that that's going to look? Well, I think it's going to be one of those things to where like uh, the house concerts I've been hosting enough at uh, my place for about a year now, like people have come here and I've had different like, you know, genres, music and all of that. And like people are so used to, you know, my generosity and all of that. And at the same time, like, used to, like, it's different because the way I make things different because I'll make, like, I'll go to the store and get some Red Snapper and, like, make, like, a French meal while <laughs> he's in front of me, like, you know, behind them, like, a nine-piece jazz band playing or somebody else or, like, you know. So it's it's very unique to where I think people enjoy that and it's better than just, like, the kind of... Um, going to a regular venue or something like that where people are so used to that but it combines all like the, the the skills that I have so far like my own way you know right yeah and it seems like you really took the time to think about how you could offer your skills to like another group of people and like so you're using basically your passion to really create your your own destiny right basically Exactly, exactly. Like once you learn how to get out of your own way. <laughs> <laughs> right. So um, did you, so when you went to culinary school, how, how long was culinary school? Uh, two years, two year program. Uh, it's usually longer before, but I had an experience going in. So you, you test out and then they place you on whatever track that, you know, you get, when you get there. Wow. Were you, were you able to use your GI Bill? Yes, I still have some left over too. <laughs> <laughs> Are you serious? Well, yeah. so you twenty-four months, and then you have twelve more, twelve more months left. That's, mm -hmm. that's amazing. Dang. Yeah. Uh, so, like, you really know how to cook. Has that helped? <laughs> you? <laughs> it really definitely helps. Yeah, I'm sure it's like helped in a lot of ways. Um, so, like, let's talk about your transition and when you started to make that transition and said, "Okay, like it's time for me to make the move." You got? Like, did you start making the move when you were in the fifth year or like toward the sixth year? How did that? How did it play out? It was um, around the fifth year. I started thinking about, well, the fifth year, I actually wanted to do Marine Security Guard and be stationed in Europe somewhere and have, like, a cake, like, nine to five. Well, that didn't happen, <laughs> like, almost two years, so. Yeah. <laughs> so I started to really think about, all right, what do I want to go next? And um, Johnson & Wales is the school I went to. Uh, I applied to uh, other culinary schools, too, but they were the only ones that had more of a a VA program more specifically for benefits. Johnson, I didn't know that until I read the history that, you know, Johnson & Wales is like main uh, benefits. They were founded on like a military basis. So it's like um, they had uh, a lot more offerings when it came to scholarship, a lot more offerings when it came to people that were helping new veterans, you know, transition to VA and people that actually like, you know, cared and were on top of their stuff you didn't have there was none of that you know normal stuff you have to deal with so i think from there like that was what uh made the decision yeah 
And what, what do you think you took over or transitioned some good skills from the military and brought them into the culinary field? Yes, I think specifically the kind of, um, I guess the mindset of one having like tough skin and also like just getting things done, like just getting them done. Like it's just, it becomes more apparent when you're in the civilian world where you're used to working a certain way and you're like, everything really can be that easy. Just get it done. Like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> so I've had that mindset. I think that was the biggest thing of like, you know, just making sure that there's always constant momentum, you know? Right. Right. And did you uh, did you face any adversity when you were like going, you know, kind of against the grain doing something that was not your, you know, having to do with your U.S. Marine Corps experience? Yes, because I feel like, you know, anything, well, a lot of people, um, depending on what their uh, MOS is, you know, the transition is something that's completed. Mine, I didn't do any culinary stuff in the Marine Corps. I did artillery. So I'm basically starting from like the bottom up. So that was like the, you know. Right. The, the difficult part is when you do that, especially coming out of like, you know, regular stabilized military pay. Now you're going back to something that maybe doesn't make you as much money and right. help you live, you know, in the meantime. So that was probably the most like, you know, difficult part. Right. And did you kind of, during that time, did you have to kind of lean on family and friends uh, or other resources in order to be like, yo, am I doing the right thing or... Is this like, <laughs> what the heck? Yeah, multiple, multiple times where you just have a, like that question in the back of your head. I'm like, man, is this the right path? Like second guessing and all that multiple times. But it was one of those things to where it was like almost like reaffirmed to when I thought about like anything else that I wanted to do or anything else I was doing. Like it just didn't, it wasn't ex as exciting or added up to what I was doing now. So that was always the, you know, verification. Wow. Okay. And so you kind of, you kind of mentioned, um, you know, like the time you would bring in like a red snapper and somebody would have like a French meal, like, off yeah. the cuff. um, can you kind of put us in that situation? Like the one time that things just kind of clicked for you and you were like, Oh, I should do this. I should do this. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I host a uh, regular music house concerts. My style is more like, you know, Gritty songwriter blues, but I've had all other genres, you know, like um, a lot of hip hop artists, rap artists, um, folk artists, you know, like uh, jazz artists. But there's this one time, like, you know, we had a jazz band uh, come in to play a house concert that night, you know, live brass band. I have a large living room, the kitchen's in front of it. So that day I happened to be running late and I was like, man, you know, what, what, what can I get? So I grabbed the first thing that I did was, you know, grab the seafood market and grabbed a few ingredients. And I came back and uh, originally I was just going to make something else. But I was like, hey, everybody's chilling right here, you know, in the living room. So I'm like, why don't I wait to cook it when they start playing? And all of a sudden it just seemed like, you know, a very like personalized home, like, cocktail party minus all the having to dress up and everything everybody's just like <laughs> to each other like is so you look around and as i'm like searing fish you know like making a <laughs> cream mushroom cream sauce like everybody's smiling everybody's like looking at me to turn around looking at them like the um, band playing i'm like and that's when i clicked in i'm like wow this is the setup that i want you look around everybody's happy everybody's having a good time you know everybody remembers this you know man that sounds like a good, like I wish I was there. It sounds like a good time. <laughs> um, so do you think that you'll eventually have a restaurant and things like that? Um, no, I, uh, I wanted to go eventually like the personal chef route, but yeah. then I realized that like, I didn't want to do that either. What I wanted to do is build my own brand of things, you know, like my own brand of like music and house concerts and combining hospitality. Because, like, um, while all the other paths are, you know, normally the traditional route, like, mine, I want something that down the road to where I can lead to eventually being my own boss. Right. <laughs> so, but also, like, you know, just, yeah, growing my brand because the way I see things and the way how I'm creative and, like, stuff like that, I don't see it in a lot of other, not saying that other people aren't creative, but my style of, like, creation is a lot different than other people so I'm like why don't I just build on that you know 
Wow. Yeah. So you looked within and now you're projecting that forward. So now, um, what is the trajectory of like the next three to five years look like? Cause it seems like you've been on this path for a few years and, mm -hmm. um, everything's pretty much clicking. And I think some people think that, Oh, things should happen like in six months or a year, but it seems like you're, you're cool with, with knowing that like your purpose is, mm -hmm. is what it is. And like you, you have a specific path toward getting there. So like, the next two to four years, like what, what kinds of things are you going to focus on? Well, I'm glad you brought that up because this is actually, we're looking at the end result of like the past, like eight years of me building this. So it's like, you know, amazing. That, that, um, of like figuring out all everything of by trial and error. So I think like the next, uh, three to five years, will still be just kind of fine tuning everything where eventually I think uh, where I kind of move, want to move all these events if I'm going to have them more frequently out of my house and then like into like an actual location, not like a venue venue, but something like small size that, you know, just to kind of grow from there, especially um, in, I live in New York city, like, you know, everything, like, I don't know if I'm going to be in this apartment for like five years, you know, like, <laughs> so um that's more the 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 um trajectory right now also as well as like building on top of like the music ep that i have and like maybe start to like work with other like local um people like other local artists and other like creatives to kind of like bring everybody together as like a collective and like kind of build from there like it's a lot easier to build when you have like a community around you you know Right. Yeah, you can almost kind of do whatever he feels best. Yeah. So, um, so you talked about your music. What kind of like music style do you have? It's like uh, gritty songwriter blues with like bits of alternative and soul. Like if you combine like the old rhythm of like the Almond Brothers band, how they were like tight as a band, and you can hear the musicianship with like that old, like that the bite of that Otis Redding had when he sang, you know, you kind of had that begging voice along with like, you know, um, the maybe like late eighties, like if you, uh, the raspiness that Chris Cornell had in Soundgarden, like it's like, you can tell it was there yet, but it wasn't like completely polished. Well, I mean, mind you, I practice a lot more since their, you know, age, but it's right. combine all those two. And then, then that's what you kind of get. So. so you play instruments as well? Mm-hmm. Guitar and guitar, a little bit of bass, but mainly guitar and sing. Wow. So this man, he is a chef. He <laughs> plays the guitar and he sings. That's crazy. So he's incredibly talented and he's just working to just to to be a beast, basically. That's what it seems like. <laughs> um, but yeah, so like if there was any advice that you could give someone you know, or the the young the the chef eight years. I mean, the the young chef that you are. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, eight years from that experience. Like, what would you have told yourself, or what would you tell the person that's like right behind you? Um, to be patient. That there's going to be a lot of times. There's going to be a lot of peaks and valleys, and it's more of just. Excuse me. Um of just maintaining that kind of like, uh, I guess things for me, more specific examples, like the daily practice, remember like to get things done. Like everything is not always gonna be like this grand, like landmark and other that, like you have to get used to the fact that a lot of times, most when you're working on this, it's gonna be just kind of like this steady plateau trajectory. You're moving, but everything's not always gonna be a low point or a high point. You have to get used to like the, obviously like the daily grind of doing things and doing them consistently so right. i'd say consistently be patient i think my i tell my old self that because the old self would just be you know like when things weren't working in a specific time period i get frustrated and i want to do something else and i like <laughs> <you know that>. right <laughs> and I, I totally understand that and I, I i'm experiencing that myself too i told you about how this is the first video yeah. <laughs> interview that we've had. And so I think incremental progress is probably one of the most important things that we can really just focus on sometimes, um, especially from a day-to-day -day, uh, vantage point. 
But um, I know you have to get to your next appointment because you're a busy person. <laughs> but um, I really appreciate you for spending time with us today. Um, ladies and gentlemen, this is Brandon Russ. I am Robert E. Woods III from the Night's Tale Podcast. Um, and thank you very much for listening or watching. Have a great day.